Welcome back to part three of our live training session here with our K24 swapped Honda Civic Si. In the last tutorial, we finished up the part throttle driving, the idle tuning. Now we're gonna move on to our wide open throttle tuning here on our zero degree fuel and spark timing tables. We have a lot of things to cover, including how we're gonna be setting up and calibrating our knock sensitivity tables so we actually register accurate knock counts. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Welcome back to our live training session here with our K24 swapped Honda Civic Si. In this tutorial, we're gonna be focusing on working on our zero degree fuel and spark timing tables once again, but this time we're gonna be looking at full throttle mapping. We're gonna focus our attention on the calibrating columns eight, nine, and 10 here for our naturally aspirated engine, which we can, can be found right here. So we started to make some changes based on what we were finding and registering when we were doing our previous uh, data logging at part throttle conditions. We were finding that column eight here was populating with some value. We were carrying that forward and editing columns nine and 10 as well at the same time. We're gonna find out how far the fuel is off in this tutorial. And then more importantly, we're gonna focus on establishing the correct knock sensor threshold values for a knock sensor table. Uh, making sure that we're not getting false knock detected. What we did in that last tutorial is actually went into columns uh, seven, eight, nine, and 10, and we reduced the timing down here quite a bit, about six to eight degrees from the values that we had previously in there. Now this timing is already conservative from the base map video. The last video we pulled the timing out even further. So what we're gonna do here is fire up the engine. We're gonna set up our dyno here on the main line. We're gonna do some full throttle pulls. We're gonna evaluate what's going on with our fuel delivery first, at the same time we can evaluate what's going on with our spark timing. We can figure out what's going on with our knock control because we have conservative timing, reducing the cylinder pressure, reducing the likelihood for the engine knock or pre-ignite. And we're gonna see at this low spark timing, lower cylinder pressure thresholds, if the knock sensor is showing knock activity. If it is, then we have noise and we need to go after the sensitivity tables. If it's not showing any activity, well then we can move forward and start to inch up our spark timing. And then if we see knock register, we know it's a real knock event because we were able to do pulls with the engine not knocking with the sensitivities tables set to their OEM thresholds. Now let's go and talk about the sensitivity tables real quick here. If we jump in, we have these sensitivity tables. Now we're specifically on their low speed or low cam, that's what we're looking at. And there's a sensitivity table for all of the various cam angle pairings. So 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. This essentially setting a background sensitivity threshold line. And if our knock sensor output coming from the knock sensor, if it's exceeding that threshold line, it considers that to be a knock event or a knock count, which is what we see registered here in our knock counter up top. Now, what we can find here is if we jump into our graph, I have a specific uh, graphing template that I've created here. That's gonna be set up with RPM, knock level, knock threshold, and knock count. And what we can find here is that we're plotting our knock level, for example, we're seeing that this was in the part throttle driving that we were doing. I got a knock count right about here, so we can see that little pink line ticked up, and we find another one happened right here. Now notice that specific area where it showed there was a knock event right here, it coincided to this blue line, so if we zoom in here even tighter, so if we right click, zoom in, right click, let's keep zooming in, we can really get down onto the spot that it shows the knock event happened at. Notice that when we have our, this is the blue here, the knock level that's coming out of the knock sensor. It's the processed signal out of the knock sensor. So when it has a spike like this and it exceeds the red line, that means that there's a knock event. That's what we can see it's counted up right here, very clearly. So we're looking for this behavior. What's going on when we have low spark timing and seeing if we're finding this really big jagged spikes or outputs out of our knock sensor. This is likely a actual real knock event here because we can see the threshold line, which is our red line, that's what's established from our values in our table here. So for example, if we cross reference the data log, let's actually get offline here. Let's just take a look, we'll pair it together. Where we're finding, wherever this, the cursor's at here, so the red, the, my cursor's in the data log, the red line, that's coinciding to the values in our table right here. That's saying that a value of 22 gives us a knock threshold of something like 3.32. And if we exceed that, so the process knock signal here in the blue exceeds that, that's gonna count as a knock count and we're gonna find it increments up in our knock counter. Now, if we allow it to run in the normal stock knock logic, it would start to try to pull the timing back if it constantly saw knock count over time. It's seeing this type of activity. What we can do here is just purely pay attention to our knock count, where that happened at, look at the actual data in here, 
This is laptop logging, not onboard logging. We'll talk about that here in a second. But in this laptop log at a slower sampling rate, we can see that there's a clear overstep, which can be number one, noise, or number two, a knock event. But looking at this, the knock sensor was quiet all of a sudden right here. It was worse, and then right here, it signified there was a knock event. That's likely gonna point to going into our spark timing table and having to edit our values right. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.